All right, guys, welcome back to another one. We're doing some 20 gauge Coyote loads today. Number four buck, starting with three inch, and then we're working our way down to two and three quarter. Uh, this load is uh, quite a hefty one, even for a three inch 20 gauge. It's uh, it's found its way into the Magnum 16 gauge and 12 gauge territory. It's uh, ounce and three eighth at 1150 FPS. I got this load from uh, Ballistic Products Load of the Week. It's the 20 gauge Little Giants. Um, we're using Hodgdon Little Gunpowder, 30 grains of it. The load is for nickel plated lead shot, but I'm substituting the lead bird shot for number four buck. Payload weight is all that really matters. Lead to lead. Should get a little bit lower pressure with buckshot than with birdshot. Ooh, forgot to uh, resize. No, this is already resized and deprimed. We're going with a Shadot primer. Full disclosure here, this is my first time ever loading this, so you guys are going to figure this out along with me. How much, I'm using a gas seal by the way. Gas seal and fiber wall. This is conventionally loaded, we, we are using mylar. But, uh, yeah, never loaded this before, so we're going to figure out together how much fiber wadding I need. Little gun, 30 grains. 1150, actually, I think it was 1165 FPS, 8500 PSI, pretty low. You can go faster if you want to. Uh, 32 grains might get you 1200 FPS, but I'm happy with 1165. It'll pattern better. That looks like it's about 30 grains. 31. Still 31. Ballistic products, low profile gas seal. Again, this is the 12 gauge uh, wad guide, but it works fine for all gauges down to even 28. Gas seal is installed. I think I finally figured out lighting because you can you can clearly see down in there. Yeah. Okay, fiber wood. Looks like I may need the whole half inch. So we're gonna trim this. I'm taking about a quarter off on two sides and just the center. Don't throw away the off cuts, you might need those. I'll know here in a second. That fits in there just like that. Number four book. I don't know how many pellets on me I'll need because it's been a while since I've loaded an ounce and three eighths with number four book. I do it in mostly 16 gauge with the CSD wad because CSD wad happens to hold ounce and three eighth of number four buck flush with the shot cup, top of the shot cup. There's four, eight, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty two, twenty four. 26, 28, it is 28 pellets. 28 pellets is 1.34 ounces, and uh, with buffer, that's gonna bring us up to the ounce and 3 eighths, 1.375 or 1.38, 
and uh, this is just about where it needs to be for the crimp. That was honestly pretty easy to figure out. Buffer is ITX buffer. Stuff seems to work pretty well for buckshot. There's one full scoop. Looks like two full scoops of the Lee 2.2 cc dipper is gonna do the job. Nope, need just a little bit more. That's gonna do it. Doesn't look like I need an overshot card. Six point crimp, gotta figure out where the crimp lines are. There we go, all right. I might be taking this one back apart for an overshot card. We'll know in just a second. Good looking free crimp. This is a haul that I did the uh, curling iron trick on. So, does not look like I'll be needing the overshot card. Very nice crimp. Pretty good. That's an ounce and three eighth. 28 pellet, buffered, 1165 FPS, 20 gauge. Mark that one off camera. That is conventionally loaded too. Uh, you guys probably can't see, but right here is where the buffer and pellets start at. Probably 75% of this whole length of this shell is... Uh, your shot column not including the uh, fiber cushion wad and the gas seal and powder again it's from right here up pretty stout load for a 20 gauge it's pretty stout load for a 16 and that is uh, this 12 gauge two and three quarter inch magnum territory now the 16 can obviously go to ounce and a half and soak in the 20 gauge, 20 gauge, three inch shell. Now the next one is going to, going to be a uh, two and three quarter inch, one ounce load of number four buck. We're using, what is this? Winchester West, Winchester Western Expert, two and a half dram, one ounce of seven and a half. Mark 5, whatever that means, but, yep. That's a red 20-gauge shell, pre-1971. How's that for cool? Get this one deep primed and resized. Got a uh, full bag of 25 of these. Doesn't have the box, but that's okay. That's the 12-gauge. Well, look at that. Doesn't need to be resized. I guess that's where the, the uh, head on this shell was uh, true brass, not steel. This shrunk right back down to its original size. Now, this was a one ounce load. Did not, I don't know the velocity, but it's two and a half drums. And you know what I just realized? I forgot to put the Mylar wrap in that three inch load. Oh well, again, going back with a Shadot primer. Was a little bit tight going in there, which tells me it probably had a primer the size of the Remington 57s, if you guys know what those are. They're a little bit smaller than a standard 209 primer. And no, no one uses them anymore. They're obsolete. 
we're using uh, 17 grains of long shot or you could use up to 24 grains of HS6 but I like to load 21 or 22 um, 15 grains of WSF but that one is kind of high, high on the pressure side so I don't like loading that one 20 grains of IMR blue 21 or 22 grains of blue dot I'll work fine at finding this loader here one ounce of uh, any size lead shot you want up to uh, 31 cal uh, single lot buck where did my dipper go there it is again this is 17 grains may have overshot it yep 19 you could also use 19 grains if you wanted to but the pressure's getting up there so I like 17 grains. It's hovering around 1200 FPS and it's got a good pressure to it. Not too high. Let me grab a uh, gas seal out of here. All right. Awesome. I may be able to use the off cuts out of this, but if you guys want to know exactly how much it is, I believe it's about uh, a quarter inch, maybe three eighth, something along those lines. You can go back and watch my uh, 20 gauge, two and three quarter inch buckshot reloads using 29 cal and 31 cal buck. And uh, that one's a little bit better detailed with the fiber wad, exact amount you need. But that right there looks like it's about right. Get our four buck. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty pellets is zero point nine six ounces. That's perfect. Probably. Five rows of four. Should be anyway. Yeah, it's five rows of four. Loosely, so. Actually, I'm going to take these back out and use the Mylar wrap because these are very loose in there, stacked by fours. They want to stack by fives, but... It ain't gonna happen, so. Mylar wrap. I think I have a sheet in here. Sure do. Plus, I really don't wanna risk ripping these holes up. They are rare. You guys wanna hear a little funny story about these? Back in the day, 28 gauge skeet shooting competitions, uh, after 20 gauge shells were uh, switched over to exclusively yellow, People would take these red 20 gauge holes and bring them into 28 gauge skeet shooting competitions. Now, can you imagine what happened there? They were cheating. Taking these one ounce loads or hand loads they were using. And uh, three quarter ounce is typically three quarter ounce. Or 28 gauge is typically three quarter ounce. So you're getting another quarter ounce on top of that. Now, if they caught you obviously they would disqualify you but just thought that was funny <laughs> apparently one of the reasons they stopped using or went to yellow 20 gauge holes is because uh, sometimes during these competitions from what I was reading is the shooters would often just dump shells into their pockets different gauges and uh, whenever they were shooting they would just grab shells out of their pocket and uh, sometimes they would throw a 20 gauge shell into the chamber of a 12 gauge, which obviously that's gonna go down into the barrel a little bit. They're gonna get a click, no bang, think they had a dead round, try to rack it out, nothing comes out of the chamber. They put a 12 gauge shell in, in behind it. Yep. Gun goes boom. We have five rows of four. 
with a Mylar wrap. This one looks like it will need an overshot card, but we'll find out. If you have TPS wads or CSD wads, I'd recommend going with those over conventionally loaded because you will be able to get a little bit more range. But inside of 40 yards, these will do just fine. If you watch the video we recently did with the, the 20 gauge buckshot, you'll see at 30, 35 ish yards. We got some really good patterns with the 31 cal and uh, 29 cal. Both of those were one or slightly over one ounce loads. And for conventionally loaded, they did really well. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna throw an overshot card on that. Let me grab one out of here. Okay, these are nitro cards, but they work all the same. These are actually 24 gauge for my 24 gauge. Tear off, one, they come in sections of three. I'm just tearing off one. It's really thin, but it's really tough. You can actually use these as gas seals in 24 and 20 gauge if you want to. Six point grip. And yeah, this has one of those Winchester, we're going to burn the center of our crimp in, top deals. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a little bit ragged on top. Yeah, it's got that melted crimp, the center of the crimp. I don't really like that, but yeah, you can't really help it. Coming along good. Being real careful not to crush this. Beautiful crimp. Very, very nice crimp on that. Red 20 gauge holes are really cool. I'm going to be on the lookout for more of these because, uh, just being honest here, I think the main reason that I really don't like the 20 gauge all that well is because of the ugly yellow holes. Uh, yellow is by far my favorite color. I mean, far from my favorite color. That's probably just the reason why I really don't gravitate towards the 20 gauge. These red holes are way cooler. This one right here is also a 20 gauge and it is, again, way cooler than yellow. This one's seafoam green. That's a pretty call, a uh, pretty hole. It is paper too. Uh, it, this was yellow. I did spray paint it green. I masked off the base of the sh uh, of the uh, shell and just sprayed it green. Let it dry. Loaded it up. But uh, I guess that'll end this one here, guys. Starting to lose my voice a little bit. Um. Well, thank you for watching. If you got any questions, comments, leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you. Uh, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.